after the Constitutional Revolution, power really shifted to the feudal class of notables, the big landowners, tribal chiefs, because after 1909, you had universal male suffrage, which meant all adult males could vote. And since most of the population were peasants or tribesmen, it meant that the tribal chiefs and landlords, and in some places the clerical leaders, could shepherd their followers to the ballot boxes and get their votes so that parliament really became a club for notables. By the 1920s, 1930s, if you look at the membership of the match less, it's almost 80, 85% uh, landed class. The main interest of the notables, of course, was to protect their landed interests. Uh, so they were very much against any members of the radical intelligentsia, intelligentsia who wanted some sort of uh, land reform. But besides that, what they, of course, were very interested in was limiting the power of the monarch because if the monarch had too much power, it meant that uh, uh, notables would uh, lose out on that. Then there were other differences among the notables. The notables in the south often had economic ties with the Gulf, with India, which meant with, obviously with the British Empire. The notables in the north, in Azerbaijan, in Mazandran, Gilan, tended to be much more plugged into the Russian sphere of economic interest. So in that way, there was a division among the uh, notables uh, reflecting the bitter rivalry between the Tsarist Russia and Britain, uh, especially uh, beginning of the 20th century at the height of the great game uh, competition.